Now, talking about what changes this could wrought, could could wreak on Australia, you've been critical about Indigenous culture in the past in a few speeches you've made in the Senate. You say, you have said that Indigenous culture centres a lot on the concept of payback, which usually involves someone being speared for having committed a wrongdoing. Now, Jacinta, if the voice gets up and there is this panel of Indigenous elders or whatever they are, whoever they are, uh, are empanelled to offer advice to our federal government, which is descended from, you know, the centuries of, of British civilization. Will that panel be uh, be informed by these kind of by some of the less sophisticated aspects of indigenous culture? Well, you know, it is quite often the powerful, the activist class that have exploited um, some of our most vulnerable who have largely denied the fact that traditional culture plays um, a, a pretty prominent role in the levels of acceptance of violence within uh, those communities where violence is most prevalent. Uh, so I have no doubt whatsoever that it will be the same individuals vying for those positions of power uh, the same individuals that have sat at um, the table who have had the ear of many prime ministers over the years and pretty much been responsible for providing outcomes, the sorts of outcomes that are supposed to improve lives of Indigenous Australians, but who haven't uh, done that. But you can also you can also guess that, I mean, some of those activist types that we're hearing from, Thomas Mayo, if they can get a seat at the table as they have done in terms of shaping this whole um, voice concept and debate, then they will be jostling uh, to get to one of those positions of power and it'll be their agenda um, that they will be making representations on. So it won't be about advice giving. It'll be running their own agenda and we've heard from them. We've heard them talk about um, treaty reparations, compensation, the term makarata, of course, which is um, translates to payback for the Yungle people, a spearing in the leg. So who is it? that these individuals are proposing should be speared in the leg for what's occurred in our nation's history. Um, it's it's really deeply concerning stuff, uh, which is why, obviously, I'm very passionate about ensuring we, um, we can secure a no vote. Yeah, well, voice, treaty and truth. Nobody, in none of those things, is there any mention, really, or any consideration of the people you were voted to, you were elected primarily to represent, and that is the women and children in Aboriginal camps who are suffering daily some of the most horrific conditions anywhere in the world, let alone a, you know, a, 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 a sophisticated and prosperous country like Australia. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And that's why I think it was important to launch my uh, documentary also, Yimi Junga, uh, which is on binge, uh, which was to highlight exactly what goes on in remote communities. You know, the voices of those vulnerable are sidestepped, they're ignored, they're denied um, the opportunity to be heard by the activist class, by the elites that have had a seat at the table. I mean, really, if they wanted to solve some of these problems, they would be amplifying those voices, um, not the voices of organisations that are funded millions of dollars every every year um, to, you know, fail in terms of providing outcomes, but it's those voices of grassroots individuals on the ground. And it is those individuals who don't support this because they haven't been heard so far by uh, those organisations that are supposed to represent them. Uh, so they don't trust that this, this voice entity will in any way, ex uh, you know, support their views or allow for them to be heard. They're not advocating for them now. They haven't done so in the past. So why would they suddenly change if they're going to be constitutionally enshrined?